Lenny Kravitz, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Good to see you, my brother. Every time I see you, I feel like you have unlocked a cheat code to life that makes you more relaxed and more cool than any other human being on the planet. And I, I genuinely would like to know what is your secret? Man, I'm just, uh, I'm living in a constant state of gratitude, uh, of acceptance, of growth. Um, I'm at peace, you know? And uh, it's been a long journey getting there, let me tell you. It's been a long ride, but I feel great. I've never felt better. And, uh, you know, the best is in front of us. It's funny that you say the long ride because you know, I grew up knowing Lenny Kravitz as the rock legend. You know, I know Lenny Kravitz is the guy who sold over 40 million records, the guy who has four Grammys, the guy who has toured the world multiple times. But reading your book um, that you recently put out, the New York Times bestseller, truly gave me a different insight into who you are. Because I thought it was going to be like a, a rock star book of just like, you know, juicy stories and rock tales. But it felt like, it felt like a therapy session. It felt like a, like, like a vulnerable conversation with Lenny Kravitz, the human being. Talk me through why you chose to write the book about the first 25 years of your life instead of the following 25 years of your life. Well, let me tell you, first of all, I never thought of writing a book. I didn't want to write a book. It was not in my mind. Uh, through a mutual friend, I met uh, David Ritz uh, and uh, at a dinner and I knew his books. I'd read his books. I know he's a great writer. And he said, uh, you should write a book and I'd like to help you do it, but you should write it. And uh, I thought that's wonderful, but I'm not interested. By the end of the dinner, he'd convinced me. And the biggest thing for me was I thought my life wasn't interesting enough <laughs> <laughs> to write about. Um, I really didn't, but I took it as a challenge. And when I got into it, I realized this was about healing. And it was about, uh, especially when it comes to the relationship with my father, which was very challenging. Uh, and we had just made peace before he passed. So there were still issues and things that weren't worked out. But through writing this book, right. I was able to back up and see people in my life, including myself as a character. And it took that, it took the personal part off of it. And I began to love my father in a way that I couldn't when he was alive. Wow. And, and it just provided a lot of healing. And, you know, the beautiful thing is, even though people may not be on the planet anymore, it doesn't mean that your relationship can't evolve based upon what's going on in your spirit and in your mind. Do you, do you think that your relationship with your father affected how you became a dad yourself? Because I mean, one of my favorite things to watch is how you interact with your daughter, Zoe. You, you seem like the biggest teammates. You know, you seem like you respect each other on, 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 a, on, a, on a mutual level, but at the same time, she still goes, that's my dad. Do you think maybe that affected it and you said to yourself, hey, I'm gonna be a different kind of dad with doing the best with what I have? Yes, I, I, I knew what I didn't wanna be, but the beauty was also, I got to see him be a really wonderful grandfather. And of course, uh, my mother and her father, uh, my grandfather was from the Bahamas, uh, they had the relationship that Zoe and I have. So I was witness to that. They were so tight, so close. They were father and daughter. They were best friends. And uh, I mean, we used to make fun of it. My grandfather would come up to the house and hang out all day with my mother, all day, talking, 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 talking. And then He'd leave, and then an hour later, I'd hear her on the phone talking to him again. And he was just here. He just left. He was here for he was here for eight hours. What could you possibly have to talk about more? But that's how they were. So I was taught that, and and I look at the relationship that Zoe and I have. Well, I just spoke to two minutes before uh, you and I got on here, um, and we have that relationship, and it's a, it's a, it's a true blessing. You know, Lenny Kravitz is is a mix of everything. You know, uh, I, I, I related to a bit of your story just because of that, you know, coming from a, from a biracial household, especially in the time when it was not normal. I mean, that's, that's when you were born into this family, you know, to, yeah. to, to, to have a mom who was the first in, in the first interracial couple on television, it was a big deal. Your mom 
is one of the women in the book who you celebrate. And I mean, like, you really celebrate this woman. Like, when you read this book, you go like, man, this is truly Lenny's love letter to his mom. And I can relate to that, but, but I wanted to know, like, what do you think it is about your mom that made you who you are today? She was an elegant, graceful, soulful human being. She never had a bad word to say about anybody. She didn't judge people. Her mind was open. She didn't gossip. Uh, it was all about putting positive energy into the world. Uh, at her funeral, uh, Robert Guillaume, the actor, uh, got up to speak. And he said, if Roxy were s- sitting next to the devil himself, she'd say, what a lovely red suit. It was all it was all about <laughs> always putting positive energy forth regardless of the situation. And so she was that person. And she also taught me to be proud um, of who I was, that I was a young black person, but I had this Russian Jewish father. I want you to be uh, proud of both sides. I want you to understand both sides. I want you to participate in both sides but understand that you are black. And she taught me that from a a very young age. You take the good with the bad and you try and live the best life possible. I feel like that's that's what Lenny Kravitz does, you know, that's... I mean, you're the guy who got stranded in the Bahamas, you know, I mean, also, I mean, it's it's, it's your home, it's one of your homes, but you went there thinking, I'm going for like, what, a week or a weekend? A week, week. yeah, yeah. The pandemic hits. And then it's like, that's it. And so your clothes run out, which means you're just running around topless, which is great for everyone else who's around there. I, I, I broke you out a shirt I haven't worn in the entire <laughs> month. You're getting, one of the, you're getting one of the new shirts that, that, uh, that's been hanging in the back of the closet that doesn't smell too bad. So you... I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Why do you think it's so important for Lenny Kravitz to spend so much time disconnected? Because that, that's, that's something I've noticed about you as a human being. Like in the conversations I've been lucky enough to have with you whenever we've hung out, I know that that's something that's really important to you. Is you, you find ways to disconnect. You go to the Bahamas, you got your farm in yes, Brazil. Yes. You, yes. you you have many spaces where you're not with the world. Why do you do that? Disconnecting for me is, is connecting, actually, because that's when it gets quiet. Mm-hmm. That's, when I, that's when I slow down and I become part of the nature and I can hear, I can truly hear. And that's when the music just starts coming. Right. I'm not, I'm not writing it, I'm receiving it. And uh, so I love that, you know, keeping, you know, I haven't worn shoes in eight months, you know, I'm, I'm grounded, I'm walking in the grass, on the dirt, on the sand for the last eight months with no shoes, uh, all of that. And just being quiet and being in the middle of all this nature uh, just enables me to be more creative. Wow. Yeah, man. I, I'll tell you this. You, you, you are living a, a blessed life and you bless us with those blessings. Um, uh, thank you for looking after yourself. Thank you for taking man, the time. So, thank you for sharing I'm what so, you've I'm shared so in the book, man. You, man. I'm, I'm always watching you. I and, appreciate uh, it. It's a pleasure, my brother. I hope to see you soon in person. Yeah, man. I'm going to get to the dreads and then we're going to walk in the streets together and they'll be like, damn, look at those two guys. They're both good. Look- <laughs> who's the guy with the... Oh, there's one guy with a six pack and one guy who does not have a six pack at all. That's... Very far. He, he probably eats for the other guy. That's what happens there. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz, man. Thank you so much, my dude. I really Respect appreciate you joining us. Brother.